Hi everyone, Christina Werner here. Welcome to another video for Sima Says Stamp. This is actually my first video for 2018 and I'm happy to be doing it for Simon. And today I'm going to be doing another monthly mail art envelope. So I have a sea glass metallic envelope from Simon here and I'm going to use that really cute stamp set that's off to the side. This is the Best Friends stamp set from Simon from their latest release and I want to watercolor the images and because I am going to be using a regular envelope but watercoloring I'm going to trace the size of the envelope onto some watercolor paper and then later I'll be adhering the watercolor paper to the front of the envelope. So I'm trimming that down using my trimmer and then I'm going to place the watercolor piece inside a misty stamp positioning tool so that I can stamp the images. The watercolor paper I'm using today is from Strathmore. This is some cold press watercolor paper. And I'm using some VersaFine Onyx Black ink to stamp those images. Because the surface of the watercolor paper is quite textured, the lines of the stamping might be a little bit wonky. They might have some gaps or some pieces missing. So I'm going to stamp this multiple times and that's when using a misty stamp positioning tool comes in handy. So I'm pressing this down, getting really good solid black lines, and then I taped it down to a hard board using some blue post-it tape. I'm going to take my heat tool and help dry all of that stamping. Now usually VersaFine ink dries fairly quickly, but because I stamped it multiple times in order to get really solid black lines, it's got quite a bit of ink there. It's beneficial to help the drying process with the heat tool if you're in a time crunch or if you don't want to wait for all of that time for it to dry. So I'm just using my heat tool to dry that a little bit more quickly. I'm gonna be using some Distress ink today. And so I have my white palette. It's a watercolor palette from Art Impressions. And I'm gonna press my Distress ink pads on down to that palette so that I can have some different pools of color. The colors I'm using for the background or the sky behind these animals are Seedless Preserves, Chipped Sapphire, and Broken China. I'm going to start out by putting a layer of water down onto my watercolor paper here. Just making sure everything's nice and wet. Then I'm going to speed up the video process a little bit so you can see the entire background painting. Started out with seedless preserves and then brought in some chipped sapphire and then I ended that color trio with the broken china. And as I finish painting to the very bottom of this piece, I'm just adding a little bit more water to my paintbrush and bringing that pale blue color down to the very bottom. I'm painting very carefully around those animals because I want to make sure that um, even if some of the color seeps into the animals, it's okay because I'll paint over the top. But just to make it a little bit easier, I wanted to avoid going directly over those animals. I used my heat tool to dry that. And now I'm using a, just a wet paintbrush with no color on it. And I'm painting in a cloud shape, just some nice circular bumps. Then I'm going to take a paper towel and put that over that area and press it down and pick up some of that color. Distress inks are purposely formulated to reactivate when when re-wet. So when you add water to it, it does reactivate those colors and you can sop up some of the color. And that leaves me with a nice kind of ghosted cloud edge. I'm going to add in another cloud edge right here. I'm going to bring it down to the top of that last one. And I'll use my paper towel once again just to sop up some of that color. So the colors in this top left corner are a little bit intense. So when I add this third line of clouds, I'm actually going to add a little bit more water than I even used on the other two. So I'm gonna bring in kind of like a couple different little bumps, make sure I paint all that clean water down to the edge. And then I'm gonna add some more clean water, just trying to pick up some of those darker areas. So I really love how this turned out, kind of has an ethereal kind of ghosted image over those clouds. So now I'm going to paint the animals at the very bottom, and I'm starting out with a rusty hinge. This is the color I'm going to use for the lion, and I just wanted to show you how I painted this by bringing in some strong color, and then coming in with a clean brush and just spreading out that color to the different areas on the animals. 
So for the donkey, I used chipped sapphire. It's kind of a nice bluish purple. I thought it sort of reminded me of Eeyore from Winnie the Pooh. I thought that'd be kind of cute. I used walnut stain on the moose, and then I used vintage photo on this beaver. I think it's a beaver. It might be a squirrel. I'm not entirely sure. It's probably more of a squirrel considering its tail. But I also used some worn lipstick on their cheeks to give them a little bit of a blush. And then I used some hickory smoke to put a shadow beneath all of these animals. And that just gives them something to stand on, gives them a little bit of ground. So after that was dry, I used my paper trimmer just to trim off the white edge that was left behind after I used that blue painter's tape. And I actually wanted my watercolor piece to be slightly smaller than the size of the envelope, just so that when I adhere it to the envelope, that I don't have any edges that are, you know, threatening to be pulled up when it goes through the mail. So I added some postage to the top right corner, and then I grabbed a black pen. This is a Pilot Envelope Addressing Pen. This happens to be waterproof, so if you do want to address your envelope before you start painting, you definitely could do that. I'm writing Vicki's name along the cloud edge at the top, and I thought it'd just be really fun to mimic the edge of that cloud, sort of, sort of incorporate the words and the address into the envelope design. And I'm also doing kind of some wonky letters and numbers. I'm using different sizes and making sure that the, um, they kind of bounce up and down. It gives a little bit more of a playful vibe. So I've got that address on there. I'm just going to finish off with her postal code, making sure I'm using some fun numbers for that. So I'm going to add a please deliver to right above the address, just so that there's not any question for where this is going. And then I'm going to adhere it down to the envelope. Now I mentioned before that I want to make sure that the edges of this watercolor piece don't peel up or start to bend up from the surface of the envelope. And because of that, I'm using this uh, Express It tape from Copic. And the reason why I'm using a tape like this as opposed to using my usual tape runner, um, which is Tombow Extreme Adhesive, which would actually do a really good job for this, except for the fact that I wanna make sure that the adhesive is as close to the edge as possible without it going over the edge. I just wanna make sure that all these edges are pressed down really completely down onto that surface of the envelope and that there isn't any opportunity for the edges to catch on any other pieces of mail that are going through the postal service um, and possibly peel up this watercolor piece. I wanna make sure it's adhered down completely. So I went around all four edges and then added just uh, three diagonal lines in the center. That's going to help hold it down to the center of the envelope as well. So I'm gonna peel up these uh, release papers or the backers that are on the tape pieces and then I'll be able to adhere it down onto my envelope. So the envelope, like I said before, is actually a sea glass metallic envelope from Simon. And it's a really, really pretty blue color, but you can't really watercolor on the top of it. So this is a great way to get around that uh, dilemma. You can have a separate piece of watercolor paper, or if you were doing some other type of project where the envelope doesn't really lend itself well to the type of medium you're using. So the last thing to do is to add my return address onto the back of the envelope on the flap. So I'm going to use that same Pilot envelope addressing pen just to write in my P.O. box on the back of the envelope. That pretty much finishes the envelope for today. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did want to do one more additional step using some distress micro glaze or distress glaze to protect the water coloring, you definitely could. Um, I recently discovered that you know, if the envelope is going to get wet enough that it would ruin the envelope design, that it would probably ruin the entire envelope. So I've, in some cases, skipped doing the glazing step, but if you wanted to, you definitely could. It's a great thing to add to your envelopes. Just make sure you don't put it over your postage. Thanks so much for watching today. I will catch you guys in another video very, very soon.